Let's talk about magnets and magnetism. So we've all used magnets before to stick something out of the fridge or something like that. And magnets work by exerting a magnetic field. There's an invisible field that is going around from one end of the magnet to the other and it causes uh, it to be attracted to other um, things that, that are attracted to, ma to magnets. Usually iron containing materials are the things that we know that magnets are attracted to. Now every magnet has two poles. Uh, so magnets like this are colored differently to show those two poles. And what we find is that when we try and bring the magnets together where they have, have the same poles, they kind of push each other apart. They repel. But if we have the opposite ends bring them together, that's when they stick or they attract to each other. So one pole will um, be attracted to the other pole. So we can see this with uh, these magnets have the two poles colored red and blue. And so when we bring them together, if we bring the two blue ends together, you see you can't do that. As soon as you put it in there, they automatically organize themselves. <laughs> there it is. So that the red uh, ends align, uh, the red is attracted to the blue, and the blue is attracted to the red. And if we try and bring the opposites together, then they repel. Now we can, uh, we can kind of have a little worksheet here to try and imagine what it looks like when we bring two magnets together. If we have the two plus ends, so instead of coloring them, we could label the ends plus and minus. If we bring the two plus ends together, they will repel. If we bring a plus and minus end together, they can attract. So uh, we can help the class predict if this is a minus end and it's attracted to this magnet right here, what pole must this be? And because opposites attract, this must be the plus end. And if that's the plus end, we know the opposite end of the magnet must be a minus. Now, if these two repel, they must have the same poles, the same, and so those are going to be repelling each other. So this end must be a plus if the other end is a minus. And finally, if these two are attracting, then they're going to be, uh, if this is a plus, then this must be a minus. And so this last one must be a plus as well. Now, sometimes we have disc magnets. Disc magnets have a have a uh, one face of the magnet is the north pole and the south pole so the earth acts like a magnet too uh, as it's spinning and so that's why we have a north pole and a south pole and when you use a compass it aligns with the magnetic field and that's how we can always find what direction is north now if we bring these together they repel I can't push them together but if I flip it they're going to attract and we can use an interesting little tool here if we put it on a on a pole, we can if we bring it like this, they'll attract. And if I flip it over, we see that they're going to repel each other, and we can get them to float, and then we can get them to match. And if I flip it over, they're going to they're going to repel each other. We can get them to have floating discs like that. That's kind of neat. So if we looked at that worksheet here, we have a a disc magnet. We have a north face and a south face, which is attracted to the north face and the south face. And so this, if we wanted to predict this last magnet, we, this would must be the north face all across because it's attracted to the south face. And if this is the north face, then the opposite end must be the south face. Now we can visualize this, this invisible magnetic field by using iron filings. And if I put this magnet underneath a sheet here, this is a jar of iron filings, so these are attracted to magnets, and they're little metal pieces. Now these get kind of messy, so it's good to um, not have uh, kids handle this, but this is a very nice demonstration. As they shake the metal filings here, you can see it get attracted to the, ma to the magnet below, but then you can actually see the magnetic field, the invisible magnetic field becomes visible because the iron filings will align with that magnetic field. So this is a really cool demonstration. If you ever played one of those games with a little uh, guy that you can build a mustache and build his facial hair, that uses iron filings as well. And you use a magnet to move them around. So there we can really very nicely see the magnetic field that goes from one pole to the other. And you can, uh, you can buy some really nice tools that are great for kids. These are magnetic wands that are encased in plastic so they're pretty durable and you can get uh, cases that have iron filings inside of them so that you know we don't have to handle them and get dirty and get kind of messy with them but we can 
watch them move around. That's kind of cool. <clears throat> and a really neat demonstration we have uses a super strong magnet. Now mo most magnets we have and most things that are attracted to magnets are called ferromagnets because they're they are based with iron. They're built from uh, using the element iron. Well there's a, a rare earth element called neodymium and those magnets are super super strong and powerful and uh, these are uh, can be a little dangerous because we don't want to um, <clears throat> because if they get stuck to something that it might not be too easy to get them unstuck so with this ne very powerful neodymium magnet I can uh, we can show how a cereal like this bran flake cereal that has hundred percent RDA of iron well the way that that iron is added to the cereal to um, to be there for our nutrition is actually iron filings are used so what I did was I ground up the cereal using a blender so this is maybe about um, a little less than a half a cup of cereal that's been powdered and then I added some warm water to it maybe about a cup and a half so that it's not too mushy but not too liquidy and if I take my magnet and put it underneath here and I swish it around, swish it around, swish it around it's going to take all those iron filings that are inside the cereal and it's going to draw them to the magnet. Now the iron filings, it's a very very tiny amount that's added, we can't taste it uh, but that's what get, gives us it in our diet. Iron's really, iron is really important in our diet and it's important that we have enough of it. So if I lift this up you can see all the shavings there and you can see that they can move around they'll be attracted to that magnet because they are iron shavings. So we call this demo eating nails for breakfast. That's kind of fun when it always uh, is always very interesting for the kids. And then it's also fun to just take a huge pile of paper clips and play with those with magnets, see how many you can pick up and play around with. And we could use these to play with the magnet balls to um, just tons of fun to, to get some hands on with this. And you can even try and have some fun when you can magically move around some of these objects using your magnetic wand. You can set up a little obstacle course or a little maze to follow, have all your paper clips move around. So really, it's just always tons of fun playing with magnets. So I hope you can uh, have some fun exploring magnet fun, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you.